ever wondered, could I handle that? Could I be as tough as these actors? Well, today we're revealing the 12 toughest actors in Hollywood history. But here's the kicker. These rankings are based on your votes. All right, but you haven't heard the last of Harry Powell yet. The Lord God Jehovah will guide my hand in vengeance. Number 12, Chuck Norris. First things first, despite Chuck's martial arts pedigree, he spent a considerable portion of his later acting career playing a character named Walker, Texas Ranger, when he could have easily been portraying someone named Kick-Ass Martial Artist. It's a fair point, right? But hey, everyone's got their reasons. Chuck has also been politically active, or some might say a bit on the controversial side, depending on your point of view. He endorsed political heavyweights like George Bush and Newt Gingrich, which raised a few eyebrows. Plus, his martial arts skill of choice is karate, which, as a certain super spy named Archer once hilariously pointed out, is the Dane Cook of martial arts. But let's not be too hard on Chuck. Norris's journey to Hollywood toughness started with a short stint in the military, which introduced him to the world of martial arts. From there, he trained relentlessly, becoming the remarkable winner of six national karate championships in a row. It was this incredible feat that caught the eye of none other than the legendary Bruce Lee, who cast Chuck as his formidable nemesis in Way of the Dragon. That movie catapulted Chuck to international stardom and kick-started his passion for acting, or at the very least, teaching other actors martial arts. And let's not forget just how tough Chuck really is. I mean, this is a guy who's drop-kicked cars, trained with the iconic Bruce Lee, and starred in action-packed movies with names that would make even Steven Seagal salivate more than usual. Titles like Forced Vengeance, Missing in Action, An Eye for an Eye, and Silent Rage. And to top it all off, Norris is an eighth-degree black belt. He also sports a killer mustache and beard combo that only adds to his tough guy image. He served his country in the U.S. Air Force, which is no small feat in itself. Chuck openly admits his Christian faith and his affiliation with the Republican Party, and he's not afraid to roundhouse kick anyone who dares to mock him for it. He's also been known to freely donate to and endorse whichever Republican candidate is running, whether it's Newt Gingrich or Mitt Romney. Number 11. Sean Connery The original James Bond himself, Sir Sean Connery. It's safe to say that even after more than 40 years since he last took out his official license to kill, we'll conveniently forget Never Say Never Again. They've yet to find the right man to make spy fans forget the one and only Sean Connery. He graced the silver screen as the iconic James Bond in a whopping seven films, earning him the title of the third greatest cinema hero, according to the American Film Institute. He's right up there, trailing behind only the likes of Indiana Jones and Atticus Finch. But Sean Connery's career went far beyond his Bond persona. Often hailed as Scotland's greatest film export, Connery carved out an incredible career playing tough, no-nonsense, military-esque, and fatherly figures, all while maintaining an accent that seemed almost incongruous at times. From his role as Jim Malone in The Untouchables to his portrayal of Henry Jones Sr. in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Connery delivered unforgettable performances that have stood the test of time. And let's not forget his memorable appearance in the cult classic Highlander, or his roles in The Rock and The Hunt for Red October, among many others. However, it's worth noting that Connery wasn't without his controversies. During a Barbara Walters interview, he defended his stance on slapping women, which sparked outrage and debate. But remarkably, this didn't seem to diminish his sex appeal in the eyes of many. In fact, at the age of 69, People magazine crowned him the sexiest man of the century. Only Sir Sean could take such a controversial stance and not face career suicide. Now here's an interesting tidbit. Sean Connery was offered the role of Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, but he turned it down. This decision was probably simultaneously the best and worst thing to happen to mankind. Imagine Gandalf with that unmistakable Scottish brogue. And finally, one more testament to his toughness. When Connery retired from acting in 2006, he stated that one of the reasons was that he was tired of dealing with, quote, 
the idiots now making films in Hollywood. Connery passed away on October 31st, 2020. Number 10. James Cagney James Cagney, the sociopathic gangster with a cruel charm that oozed from every pore, earns his spot on this list for his numerous classic roles where he takes on society time and time again, and almost gets away with it. For a brief moment, he's on top of the world, but it always seems to blow up underneath him. Cross him, betray him, or even think about double-crossing him, and you're in for a world of trouble. He'll lull you into a false sense of security, make you trust him, and just when you least expect it, he'll fill you with holes, all while laughing in your face. That's the kind of danger, tight as tightwire edginess, and mastery of the grapefruit that Jimmy Cagney brought to the screen. Born in the heart of New York City in 1899, Cagney's journey to Hollywood toughness wasn't a straight line. After high school, he attended Columbia University, but left when his father succumbed to the 1918 flu pandemic. He took on various jobs, from bellhop to night doorman. Cagney had a flair for tap dancing and was no stranger to street brawls. He was even a talented amateur boxer, though his mother refused to let him turn pro. Cagney's transition into acting was rather serendipitous. He was called upon one fateful night to replace his sick brother in a play, and that marked the beginning of his acting career. Broadway and vaudeville became his stomping grounds, but it was a move to California in 1924 that initially proved fruitless. Returning to New York, Cagney continued honing his craft. His big break came when Al Jolson insisted that Cagney and Joan Blondell retain their roles in the film adaptation of Maggie the Magnificent, titled Sinner's Holiday, 1930. That led to a seven-year contract with Warner Brothers. Cagney's breakout role came in The Public Enemy, 1931, a quintessential gangster film. He continued down this path, starring alongside Edward G. Robinson in G-Men, 1934. Not just a tough actor, Cagney was also a champion of actor equity and played a pivotal role in the formation of the Screen Actors Guild in 1933. He showcased his considerable dancing skills in Footlight Parade, 1933, and cemented a lifelong friendship with Pat O'Brien in Here Comes the Navy, 1934. Cagney's career at Warner Brothers wasn't without its ups and downs, including fierce contract negotiations. However, in Angels with Dirty Faces, 1938, he portrayed Rocky Sullivan, a condemned criminal urged by a friendly priest to, quote, turn yellow before his execution, to dissuade young boys from idolizing criminals. Cagney faced accusations of being a communist sympathizer in 1934 and 1940, but was cleared by U.S. Representative Martin Dyes Jr. on the House Un-American Activities Committee. His last gangster role for a time came in The Roaring Twenties, 1939, alongside Humphrey Bogart. In December 1941, Cagney took on a different challenge, playing the lead role and song and dance man George M. Cohen in Yankee Doodle Dandy, 1942, a role that earned him the Best Actor Oscar. Number 9. Eddie Albert Eddie Albert, born Eddie Albert Heimberger on April 22, 1906, was a man of many talents and a deep sense of purpose. He grew up in Minneapolis, where he started working as a paperboy at the young age of six. His early years were marked by the challenges of World War I, during which he endured taunts about his German last name. In response to the mispronunciation of Heimberger as Hamburger by those in the entertainment industry, he eventually dropped his last name. Unlike many famous veterans, Albert's journey into the military came after he had already found success as an actor. His unique skills as a clown and high-wire artist landed him a seemingly unconventional job touring Mexico, where he secretly worked for Army Intelligence, taking pictures of U-boats before the outbreak of World War II. In 1942, Albert enlisted in the Navy and was soon discharged to accept an officer position in the Naval Reserve. Little did he know that his greatest heroics were yet to come. During the Battle of Tarawa, Albert displayed unwavering bravery and earned a Bronze Star. He was part of the first wave of combat that raged on for three grueling days. 
When most of the fighting had subsided, he was tasked with returning to the battle site to salvage any equipment he could find. The challenging coral reefs in the area made it impossible for Marines to land directly on the beach, forcing them to disembark 500 yards from shore. As enemy combatants began picking off the Marines in the water, chaos ensued, and the sea became a tragic scene with over 100 wounded and many dead. Albert's commitment to his fellow soldiers led him to disregard his mission of retrieving equipment and instead focus on pulling Marines to safety. He personally rescued 47 and oversaw the rescue of 30 more. One poignant moment from that fateful day still haunted Albert for many years. He encountered a small group of Marines who were unharmed but had lost their weapons during the landing. Albert offered to take them back to his boat, but they declined, requesting weapons instead. When he returned, he discovered that they had fallen victim to enemy fire. Following his military service, Albert resumed his acting career and achieved even greater fame than before the war. His extensive filmography includes notable works such as Escape to Witch Mountain, Miracle of the White Stallions, and You Gotta Stay Happy. However, it was his role in the CBS sitcom Green Acres from 1965 to 1971 that made him a household name. Throughout his career, he received accolades such as a National Society of Film Critics Award and a star on the Walk of Fame. Despite his accomplishments in the world of entertainment, Albert openly stated that his most meaningful achievement was his service as a landing craft commander at Tarawa. In 2005, at the age of 99, Eddie Albert passed away due to pneumonia. Number 8. Clint Walker Clint Walker's journey to Hollywood stardom was anything but conventional. Born in 1927, he faced a challenging early life that included leaving high school to work various jobs, including factory work and a stint on a riverboat. However, it was his service in the U.S. Merchant Marines during World War II that set the stage for his remarkable career. As a member of the Merchant Marines, Walker played a vital role in delivering supplies and troops for the U.S. Navy. Following his honorable service, he continued to take on a variety of odd jobs, including working as a doorman and in sheet metal. In 1954, fate intervened when a friend in the film industry helped Walker secure bit parts that caught the attention of Warner Brothers. Standing tall at 6 feet 6 inches with broad shoulders, Walker's imposing presence was hard to miss. He auditioned for a role that would change his life forever the part of Cheyenne Bodie in the 1955 TV series Cheyenne. Produced by the legendary William T. Orr, Cheyenne made history as the first hour-long drama with regular characters to last more than one television season. In the series, Walker portrayed a drifter named Cheyenne Bodie who took on odd jobs across the American West. His work on Cheyenne brought him in contact with a host of guest stars, including the likes of Dennis Hopper, John Carradine, Alan Burstyn, Angie Dickinson, and James Garner. Cheyenne enjoyed a successful run from 1955 to 1963, with a brief hiatus due to salary negotiations. During this time, Walker solidified his status as a Western icon. Following the conclusion of Cheyenne, Walker's career continued to thrive in the Western genre. He found success in movies during the 1960s and made a return to television in the 1970s with a series of TV movies and the short-lived series Kodiak. Although he entered semi-retirement in the 80s, Walker made a triumphant return to the small screen in 1991 when he reprised his iconic role as Cheyenne Bodie in the TV movie The Gambler Returns, The Luck of the Draw. He also made a memorable appearance on an episode of Kung Fu, The Legend Continues in 1995. In 2003, Walker collaborated with Western author Kirby Jonas to co-author the novel Yaki Gold. On May 21, 2018, Walker passed away at the age of 91 due to congestive heart failure. Number 7. Robert Mitchum Robert Mitchum, the iconic Hollywood tough guy, had a life story as fascinating as the characters he portrayed on screen. Born on August 6, 1917 in Connecticut, Mitchum seemed destined for a life filled with adventure and rebellion from a young age. Mitchum's early years were marked by tragedy as his father was killed when he was just a toddler. This loss had a profound impact on his upbringing. 
At the age of 12, he was sent to live with his grandparents, but his rebellious nature soon became evident. He was expelled from both middle school and high school, earning him a reputation as a troublemaker. By the time he reached his teenage years during the Great Depression, Mitchum had become a wild boy of the road, traveling across Depression-era America by hopping on railroad cars. At the age of 15, he was arrested for vagrancy and found himself on a chain gang in the Deep South. However, even the harsh conditions and confinement couldn't hold him down. Mitchum managed a daring escape, hitchhiking his way back north before ultimately riding the rails all the way to California. During the Depression, like many young men of his generation, Mitchum joined FDR's Civilian Conservation Corps, CCC. In 1936, he was assigned to laborious work in the forests near Chino, California. However, it was in the camp's boxing ring that Mitchum found an outlet for his toughness and resilience. He became an amateur boxer and quickly gained a reputation as a formidable fighter. Mitchum's boxing skills were so impressive that he began traveling with a semi-professional boxing circuit in California, earning $25 per fight. It seemed he might have had a career in the ring, but fate had other plans. During a match against a middleweight opponent, Mitchum broke his nose badly, forcing him to retire from boxing. This unexpected turn of events opened the door to Hollywood, where Robert Mitchum would go on to become one of the most iconic tough guys in film history. Number 6. Ernest Borgnine Ernest Borgnine's journey from serving in the U.S. Navy to becoming a beloved Hollywood tough guy is a remarkable tale of resilience and talent. Born on January 24, 1917 in Connecticut, Borgnine's early life experiences laid the foundation for his remarkable career. Borgnine's military service began in 1935 when he joined the Navy. He served until October 1941 when he was honorably discharged. However, after the attack on Pearl Harbor, he felt a strong sense of duty and re-enlisted, serving on a converted yacht that patrolled East Coast waters for U-boats during World War II. Following his second honorable discharge from the Navy, Borgnine decided to pursue his passion for acting. He enrolled at the Randall School of Dramatic Art in Hartford, Connecticut, where he honed his craft. His dedication and talent soon began to pay off. In 1953, Borgnine had a breakthrough role in the World War II classic From Here to Eternity, showcasing his acting prowess. He continued to impress audiences with his performances in films like Black Day at Black Rock. However, it was his role in Marty in 1955 that truly defined his career, earning him an Academy Award for Best Actor. This role was a departure from the tough guy persona he would later be known for. Borgnine became an icon on TV as well, portraying Lieutenant Commander Quentin McHale on the sitcom McHale's Navy in the early 1960s. But it was his tough guy roles that solidified his status as a Hollywood legend. His portrayal in The Dirty Dozen as a seemingly unassuming desk jockey who revealed his true toughness left a lasting impact. He continued to take on memorable roles in films like Ice Station Zebra, The Wild Bunch, Emperor of the North, Hustle, and Escape from New York. Even as he aged, Borgnine remained active in the entertainment industry, demonstrating his enduring toughness. His career spanned decades, and he continued to work until his passing at the age of 95 in 2012. His legacy lives on, not only in his iconic film and television roles, but also as the voice of Mermaid Man on SpongeBob SquarePants, a role that only a truly secure and versatile actor would take on. Number 5. Burt Lancaster Burt Lancaster's journey from acrobat to Hollywood legend is a story of athleticism, charisma, versatility, and an unwavering commitment to his craft. Born Burton Stephen Lancaster on November 2, 1913 in New York City, he possessed a striking presence, a dazzling smile, and an indomitable spirit that would define his career. Lancaster's early life was marked by his natural athleticism and love for physical activity. He was a talented acrobat, and this background was evident in how he carried himself on screen. Graceful, yet ready for action, with a physique that showcased his athletic prowess. His acting career began as a departure from his acrobatic roots. 
but his physicality remained a defining trait throughout his filmography. He initially faced skepticism in Hollywood, often typecast as Mr. Muscles and Teeth. However, Lancaster was determined to break free from this limited image and prove his acting range. In the late 1950s, he embarked on a transformative journey, embracing roles that challenged his initial tough guy persona. This shift marked a turning point in his career, as he became known not just for his physicality, but also for his remarkable acting abilities. Lancaster's commitment to his craft and willingness to take on diverse roles earned him recognition as one of the finest actors of his generation. Throughout his career, Lancaster received four Academy Award nominations and won once, taking home the Oscar for his powerful performance in Elmer Gantry in 1960. He also received a Golden Globe for the same role and earned BAFTA awards for his work in The Birdman of Alcatraz and Atlantic City. Lancaster's impact extended beyond his acting talent. He co-founded the production company Heck Hill Lancaster, which played a pivotal role in shaping 1950s Hollywood with groundbreaking films like Marty, Trapeze, and Sweet Smell of Success. His willingness to take creative risks and support innovative projects cemented his legacy as a trailblazer in the film industry. In addition to his acting career, Lancaster ventured into directing, taking the helm for two films, The Kentuckian and The Midnight Man. This transition showcased his multifaceted talents and deep understanding of filmmaking. Lancaster's roots were in New York City, growing up in East Harlem and attending DeWitt Clinton High School. He excelled in basketball and gymnastics, but it was his passion for the latter that would later influence his physicality on screen. He briefly pursued an athletics scholarship at New York University, but ultimately decided to focus on his true calling, acting. Number 4. Lee Marvin Lee Marvin was a perfect example of what it meant to be a tough guy, both in his on-screen roles and his real-life experiences. Born on February 19, 1924 in New York City, Marvin's journey to becoming a Hollywood legend was marked by resilience, grit, and an unyielding commitment to his principles. Marvin's tough-as-nails persona wasn't merely a product of his acting. It was forged in the crucible of World War II. He served as a U.S. Marine, a role that would become a defining part of his identity. During the war, he displayed extraordinary courage and determination, surviving a firefight that claimed the lives of many in his company and earning the Purple Heart for his valor. After the war, Marvin transitioned to Hollywood, where his rugged appearance and no-nonsense demeanor made him a natural fit for roles as soldiers, cops, or gang members. He might not have started as a leading man, but his strong and intimidating presence ensured a steady paycheck and a growing reputation in the industry. One of the highlights of Marvin's career was his Oscar-winning performance in the Western comedy Cat Baloo. This recognition catapulted him into the upper echelons of Hollywood, solidifying his status as an A-list actor. However, it was his role as Major Reisman in The Dirty Dozen that etched his name in cinematic history. He portrayed the original squad leader of The Dirty Dozen, a group of unruly and expendable soldiers tasked with a dangerous mission. Marvin's portrayal of a no-nonsense leader was so convincing it became a defining moment in his career. Marvin's tough guy image was so indelible that he once turned down a role in Jaws because he believed he would be fighting a real shark. His commitment to authenticity mirrored his marine background and unwavering dedication to his craft. Even in his later years, Marvin continued to embody the tough guy persona, starring in The Delta Force alongside Chuck Norris. His final role in this action-packed film showcased his enduring appeal and solidified his legacy as a Hollywood icon. Lee Marvin's gravelly voice, piercing eyes, and snarling lip made him a magnetic presence on screen. He was a stand-up guy, unafraid and irresistible, embodying the qualities of a true tough guy. Whether he played the bad guy or the hero, Marvin left an indelible mark captivating audiences with his unwavering authenticity. In recognition of his military service, Lee Marvin rests in the hallowed grounds of Arlington National Cemetery, where his headstone simply reads, Lee Marvin, PFC U.S. Marine Corps, World War II. 
Number 3. Clint Eastwood Clint Eastwood is the embodiment of the ultimate tough guy in Hollywood. With a filmography that spans cowboys, cops, and soldiers, he's portrayed characters who are often defined by their steely resolve and unyielding determination. He's the man with no name. And whether he's seen as good, bad, or ugly depends on your perspective. Eastwood's cinematic journey is a trail of bodies as he's dispatched more foes on screen than Jason Voorhees at Crystal Lake. Cowboys, lawmen, and soldiers have all fallen to his relentless resolve. His career, marked by iconic roles, notably lacked boxing until later in life when he took on the role of a boxing coach slash manager. His breakthrough came with the TV show Rawhide. But Eastwood's true ascent to stardom began when he embraced the spaghetti western genre. He became a symbol of rugged masculinity, earning a reputation as a true man's man. Legend has it that he named the genre himself, cementing his place in cinematic history. As Dirty Harry, he perfected the archetype of the tough, rule-breaking cop in an era when law enforcement was less bureaucratic and more shoot first, ask questions later. His iconic catchphrase, do you feel lucky, punk, is etched into pop culture history. Eastwood isn't confined to one genre. He's showcased his comedic talents as an orangutan-owning trucker in every which way but loose, which surprisingly became his biggest box office hit when adjusted for inflation. His influence extends beyond the screen. The band Gorillaz even paid homage to him with a song named after him that reached number four on the UK singles chart in 2001-2002. Eastwood's personal life is as intriguing as his film career. He's fathered at least seven children with five different women, maintaining an impressive ability to keep his family out of the tabloids. He even ventured into politics, serving as a mayor to prove yet another facet of his diverse skill set. In 2012, Eastwood created a stir on the internet when he addressed the Republican National Convention and had a unique one-sided conversation with an empty chair, possibly sabotaging or elevating Mitt Romney's profile. What can be said of Clint Eastwood that hasn't already been said? He's the quintessential tough guy, a hard-edged and snarling icon who, despite his often unsubtle portrayals, is far from one-dimensional. He's adept at comedy and as an accomplished director, with notable successes like Million Dollar Baby under his belt. Number 2. Bruce Lee Bruce Lee, standing at only 5'7 and weighing 135 pounds, was a giant in the world of toughness and legend. His influence transcended his physical stature, and he left an indelible mark on martial arts, cinema, and popular culture. Lee possessed a combination of qualities that defined true toughness. His shredded physique was a testament to his dedication to martial arts and physical fitness. He was lightning fast in his martial arts movements, making him a force to be reckoned with in any fight. But it was his mental fortitude that truly set him apart. Bruce Lee was not just a martial artist. He was a philosopher who believed in the power of the mind-muscle connection. He brought these spiritual ideologies to the mainstream, making them accessible and understandable to a wide audience. His legendary status is firmly rooted in his ability to redefine strength and toughness, both physical and mental. Bruce Lee's martial arts skills were unparalleled. He frequently faced multiple attackers and made defeating them look effortless. He could send a 300-pound bag soaring to the ceiling with a single kick and incapacitate any opponent with his famous one-inch punch. Lee's fighting abilities were not just about physical prowess. They were a testament to his mastery of martial arts and his unwavering confidence in his abilities. Beyond his physical and martial arts prowess, Bruce Lee was a cultural icon who changed the landscape of Hollywood. He was not just a sidekick, he was the star. His role as Kato in the Green Hornet TV series led to the show being referred to as The Kato Show. Bruce Lee's impact on Hollywood extended far beyond his own career. He played a pivotal role in kickstarting the film careers of martial arts legends like Jackie Chan, Jet Li, and Jean-Claude Van Damme. Lee was the driving force behind the martial arts film genre's billion-dollar success, a genre that continues to thrive today. 
His influence reached far and wide, inspiring filmmakers from the comedy geniuses, the Zucker Brothers, to Quentin Tarantino. Millions of scrawny, bullied American teens signed up for martial arts lessons after witnessing Bruce Lee's epic battles, including his iconic showdown with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in Game of Death. Bruce Lee achieved something unprecedented in Hollywood, complete control of his movies from the story to the directing. This level of creative authority was a rare privilege, and it solidified his status as a trailblazing legend of Asian descent in the industry. Lee's impact on the tough guy persona cannot be overstated. He developed his own martial arts style, Jeet Kune Do, which means the way of the intercepting fist. It was a testament to his quest for constant self-improvement and innovation. His famous one-inch punch, initially met with skepticism by many, became proof of his extraordinary power and skill. Tragically, Bruce Lee's life was cut short at the age of 32 due to a brain aneurysm, only months after completing his iconic martial arts film, Enter the Dragon. His untimely death left a void in the world of martial arts and cinema, but his legacy lives on. Number 1. Steve McQueen Steve McQueen was a Hollywood legend, renowned for his tough guy persona both on and off the screen. His life story is a testament to resilience, discipline, and the unwavering determination that shaped him into one of the most iconic actors of his generation. McQueen's early years were marked by adversity and hardship. Abandoned by an alcoholic mother and abused by a stepfather, his childhood was far from idyllic. A life of chaos and turmoil led him down a path of rebellion and street life. At 14, he found himself in reform school, facing a grim future. However, it was during his time in the U.S. Marine Corps that McQueen discovered the discipline he had been lacking. His military service from 1947 to 1950 instilled in him the values of structure and determination. The GI Bill provided him with the opportunity to study acting at Sanford Meisner's Neighborhood Playhouse in New York, setting him on the path to Hollywood. In Hollywood, McQueen was more than just an actor who played tough roles. He was a legitimate tough guy, both in his on-screen characters and in real life. The chip on his shoulder, the swagger in his step, and the intensity in his eyes were rooted in the violence and adversity he had faced growing up. He transformed from a lump of coal into a diamond, unbreakable and resilient. As a young man, McQueen had his fair share of street fights and physical altercations. In boot camp, he stood up to a bully who had tormented him, using strategy to even the odds and ensure he wouldn't be bullied again. This early experience in self-defense and combat set the stage for the tough guy persona he would later portray on screen. McQueen's early films often featured knife fights, showcasing his ability to handle bladed weapons convincingly. His real-life military training played a crucial role in his on-screen knife battles. One of the most memorable examples is the classic knife fight with Martin Landau in Nevada Smith, 1966, where McQueen's technique, including twisting the knife after stabbing, demonstrated his authentic combat training. His authentic portrayal of fighting multiple opponents was evident in movies like Baby, The Rain Must Fall, 1965, where he uses a combination of kicks, sand, and a switchblade to fend off attackers. McQueen's commitment to realistic fight scenes set him apart from his peers and made his action sequences genuinely thrilling. In addition to his proficiency with bladed weapons, McQueen was also known for his firearm skills. He was a staunch advocate for the right to bear arms and made sure to have a firearm close by, a habit that may have saved his life when Charles Manson's cult targeted him. McQueen's connection with martial arts legend Bruce Lee added another dimension to his toughness. They trained together, pushing each other to excel in their respective fields. Lee was impressed by McQueen's determination and resilience, describing him as someone who, quote, doesn't know the meaning of quitting. Their friendship was characterized by a friendly rivalry, with McQueen aspiring to be a great fighter like Lee, while Lee aimed to become a movie star like McQueen. McQueen's charisma, energy, and swagger influenced Lee's on-screen presence, and Lee learned from McQueen how to be a movie star. Despite their rivalry, McQueen and Lee remained friends until Lee's untimely death in 1973. 
McQueen, along with other martial artists like Dan Inosanto and James Coburn, has served as a pallbearer at Lee's funeral. Thank you for watching. Did we miss someone you think deserves a spot among these greats? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, if you found this video as exciting as we did, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe for more thrilling content like this. We've got plenty more Hollywood secrets and stories to share with you.